It should certainly come as no secret by now that I love a love story. Whether it's horribly tragic or disgustingly romantic, slap that romance genre on your show and you are bound to pique my interest and probably make me cry. I'm still over it! However, when it comes to anime, that genre that I love is pretty much applied to everything. If characters so much as look at each other a certain way, then out come the ships. Unfortunately, more often than not, they never set sail. You might get a cheeky handhold though. That's romance and anime, everybody! <sighs> anyway. So when I heard of this highly rated movie called Tamako Love Story, I knew I wanted to watch it. But first I had to see its partner series, Tamako Market. And with an ever-increasing watch list, I knew I'd get around to it someday. But then... that someday came. Watching this anime turn from being I'll do it eventually to an absolute necessity. I have tried writing about what happened at Kyoto Animation, but every time I do, the words feel wrong and I lose my way in grief. So instead, I wanted to use this tiny platform that I have to talk about the things that I love. To talk about the Kyoto Animation shows that I adore. And I thought, where better to start than the one that I fell for recently? Even if it's not a love story. At least... Not in the way you might think. Tamako Market, and by extension Tamako Love Story, are the kind of anime that rub people up the wrong way. Often branded as moy garbage and passed off as the type of show that won't appeal to everyone. But I'd argue they actually appeal to everyone. Because this is Nayako Yamada and there is no director in this space who encapsulates human emotions quite the way she does. I often feel as if she strips my feelings bare, teasing them out over whatever runtime she's given, so that when her piece is said, all my barriers are down, and I'm sad, and I'm lost, and I'm longing, and I'm broken, and I'm elated. She is a true storyteller of the human existence, and through the Tamako series she showcases that talent in spectacular ways, by focusing on days. Those moments in our lives that seemingly mean nothing at all. Often we'll look back at the life we lived. Our memories recall the hardships, the trials, the high points and the low ones. <laughs> but nestled in between them is everything else. Offhand conversations, shifts at work, days lost alone in thought and instead of leaving them forgotten, Yamada celebrates them giving them life in her own work that leaves her audiences contemplating their own lives. In Tamako Market, she takes a bubbly high school girl working in a family-run mochi shop and presents this idea of home and family. How we should cherish the small moments and live in the here and live in the now. In Tamako Love Story, she continues that narrative thread but entangles it with the idea of change. She picks out the fantasy elements that caused the series some discourse and replaces it with a story about adolescent youth that feels wonderfully reminiscent. It all starts with one boy and a few little words. Tamako. Hi. Ore. Tamako ga suki da. Ore, mechakucha Tamako ga suki da. Dakara. Hang on a second there, Ayla. I thought you said this wasn't a love story. Well, it's not. The confession is just used as a guise to bring us to the end. Creating a movie that is about moving forward and leaving the past behind. So much so that this isn't just a tale about Tamako and Mochizo, but about everyone else around them. We start the ball rolling on this with best girl Kana, who wants the Baton Club to have one last event together before they leave high school. And throughout all her humorous antidotes and antics, she serves as a catalyst for change in others, but also as a means of support, most notably towards Midori. In Tamago Market, 
it's framed very early on that Midori has romantic feelings towards Tamako. There is an episode dedicated to her unspoken affection after all, and there are callbacks towards this subplot as the anime and subsequent movie progress. Those feelings are never given a direct name. But Yamada does what Yamada does best and leaves the audience to figure out the character's emotions through their actions and the world around them. In Midori's case, she's jealous in Tamako Market, and noticeably heartbroken in Tamako Love Story. Because this is not Midori's love story. And so in order to move on and push past her past self, she lets Tamako go. It's bittersweet, because in aiding Tamako's decision, Midori's feelings are recognised by Kana. Kana tells Midori she has a nice expression. And later, when they're running towards the tree to help Kana overcome her fear of heights, Midori screams. A callback to earlier in the movie when Mochizo screams very much the same. In anime, this kind of action is often framed as a way of releasing pent-up frustration, of letting go, of yelling at the top of our lungs because we're so upset or angry or annoyed, and here, Midori lets go. She runs forward, she takes her first steps to move on, and I love that. It's sad in a way because she'll never get to confess her feelings. But, as Kana once said, anyone can love anyone. Both of their arcs come to a close up on that tree looking out on a new horizon. Separately from them and just shy of the spotlight is Shiori, who at the beginning of the movie is mulling over whether to leave Japan and study overseas. She comes to the conclusion that opportunities like that are best not wasted and not taking the leap would be scarier than actually doing it. In his own way, Mochizo feels the same. Does he take the leap and confess, despite the fact he has no inkling his love will be reciprocated? Or will he stay the same, moving on to Tokyo and never knowing Tamako's feelings? Youth is fleeting in that way, I suppose. Young people can't wait for a spoonful of sugar to dissolve, and bitter regret is proof of that. But bit by bit, you get a taste for it. As Mochizo gets a taste for choosing his own path, so does Midori, so does Kana, so does Shiori and Tamako. Well, the movie focuses on her as she moves from the past to present to deciding her own future. But not before she finds out that our choices can be gone in an instant. Mochizo. For Tamako and her family, this moment thankfully doesn't turn to tragedy. But the symbolism of what loss can do hangs over everyone. Life and death are one of living's only constants. The latter is a cruel and an awful thing, and in light of recent events both far away from me and in my own life, is something that hits far too close to home. And I've been thinking that often we don't get to choose how we die, but we can choose how to live. And in this life, we can choose to hide our feelings. We can overcome our greatest obstacles, we can be brave, we can put our emotions on the line, we can grieve, we can move forward, but the choice is always ours. And the choices of others greatly affect us. If it wasn't for Kana's moments, for Shiori's moments, for Midori's moments, for Tamako's mum's moments, for her dad's, for her grandpa's, for her sister's and Mochizo's, then she would have never come to the platform edge. If it wasn't for the in-between days, nestled amongst her biggest highs and her biggest lows, then Tamako never would have been able to catch that cup. Through a blur of colour and brightness, through subtle animation and even subtler conversations, through music and action and framing and glorious directing, Yamada creates a tale of self-discovery. She paints Tamako in a way that reflects all of us at one stage in our lives. She turns a seemingly nothing film into one of the best examples of adolescent youth on screen, grabbing us and pushing us towards that station with Tamako, sitting us in a front row seat to watch how that change can come to a conclusion. Yeah, Tamako love story. It's not a love story. It's the journey Tamako takes to get there. In the beginning, I told you that I love a love story, 
But Tamako Love Story is so much more than the genre it's placed in. And I'd hate to think it would be passed up because of someone's aversion to romance. It made me think, as Yamada often does about my nothing days, of the hours and minutes that I can't remember, that are perhaps the most important part of my life. And I thought to myself as the credits started to roll, what will today bring for me? Will it be nothing but an in-between? Or could it be more than that? I don't know yet. But what about for you? Well, those up. Was a thing. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and listening to me talk about Tamako Love Story. I really did fall for everything this movie had to offer and it was so much more than I ever imagined it would be. It's the kind of film that just makes me feel stupidly happy and I don't think there's a better feeling than that. If you enjoyed this video then I would appreciate it if you shared it out and commented down below. That really would mean the world to me. And if this is your first time on my channel then hi there, my name is Isla. I make stuff that looks like this. <laughs> so if you're into it then check on the screen now because you should be able to see some more of my content like my last upload and also my Bloom Into You vid where I get extraordinarily personal about love. Lastly, I want to say thank you to Yamada-san and the staff at Kyoto Animation. You are, and always will be, amazing. Thank you for bringing me this movie, and thank you for everything that you do, and that you did. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.